Hello everyone, this is Jalapeno, and today we are going to learn how to use Applied Energistics uh, for fluid management. Uh, this is actually a mod that comes from uh, Extra Cells, which is part of our uh, mod pack. Uh, I'm just going to show you a few uh, blocks that I've already set up. The first is a fluid terminal. Now, now the fluid terminal basically um, works like the normal A interface. The only difference is that it's for all the fluids that I may potentially have. Uh, right now you see I have a lot of creosati oil. Um, that's the only fluid I've actually set up to this point. Um, the other thing is I have an ME drive specifically set up for uh, for fluids. You can actually use any drive you want, but you need special storage devices, and you can just plop them anywhere. I'm just using uh, one for its own because I'm planning on filling this up uh, entirely with uh, with more uh, storage devices because you'll notice um, you're only allowed five different five different fluid types uh, for every uh, storage disks that you make. So with all the different fluids that are in the game, you're going to want a lot of these disks. Um, and then the uh, in order to actually do importing and exporting of fluids, there's actual devices called fluid import and outport buses. So they work pretty much the same as the AE versions, uh, like for items, except they're intended for fluids. They do have a little bit more complicated recipes. Uh, but they're well worth it. Actually, I'm going to create a few more of these. And I will need some export ones, so I'm going to quickly create the recipe for that too. Now, if you don't want to use storage devices, um, there is uh, there is a storage bus for fluids as well. So I could actually take this, uh, attach it to a valve, uh, for example, in my steel tank here, and then all the lava that's in here will be uh, usable, be able to uh, put more lava in or take lava out, uh, just like it could a normal thing. However, my goal today is remove all these liquid tanks and uh, consolidate the system a little bit more. Okay, so then while this works, I'm going to show you how the fluid import system works. It should actually be very straightforward. Um, we'll start with... We're not going to need this anymore. Alright, so we're going to start with our liquid DNA. So we've got a valve here that we're going to use. This is not going to be the most efficient way to uh, to normally handle the liquids using AE, but uh, just to get the materials out of here, I'm going to go ahead and put out some extra cable here. And then all I have to do is take my import bus, slap it on the end there, and then you'll see the uh, liquid DNA is draining. Now it's not doing a lot at a time. Uh, it only does, I think, uh, 20 um, uh, millibuckets per uh, per tick, or per pulse, I should say, of the A network, but it'll finish draining it off relatively quickly. And then I'm going to do, let's see here. We'll do the same for uh, the creostati oil that I have over here as well. Of course, I didn't. I didn't originally design these tanks to uh, to make proper use of uh, of a, which is one of the reasons why I want to get rid of them, just to consolidate space, and so I don't have to have 400 million layers of uh, cable all over the place. So we'll do this here too. Drain that out. And so now while that's operating, you'll notice now my terminal, these items are going up. So, you know, it's doing its job. And uh, one of the big things we're going to do is actually the uh, smelter that I have for Tinker's Construct. Uh, the, what I've been doing is I have uh, some 
solar arrays here uh, that are attached to a lava fabricator. So every time it's day, it's powering the lava fabricator, which is making minimal amounts of lava, but it's free lava, uh, so it helps. And then um, it was getting piped a portion of it into the ender tank, a portion of it into uh, the steel tank here. But what I'm going to do is actually make the smelter work completely off the uh, the AE network, just to kind of show you how the system operates. Um, I'm going to need more ME cables. That should be enough. All right. My base is so disorganized. All right. So we'll now uh, take this. in here. So now that's operating. And hopefully by now we have at least one of our exports. Oh, all our exports are done. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now with the smelter, um, if you're not aware, uh, this thing needs lava. Whoops. This thing needs lava to be, uh, to be powered. Um, the interface isn't showing the lava that's in here, but you can just basically see with the little uh, the little icon here that we do have lava flowing. I had the inner tank set up to basically pipe the lava across. I'm going to remove this and uh, just to kind of let you see this in action. I'm going to activate the smelter so that it starts smelting glass and so it'll use the lava that's in the system and we'll let that run for a bit and uh, we'll see how this is all working out so that's done and now we're going to also want to take everything out of our fuel tank here as well now if I was smart I would actually just take a valve and put it on the other side, but oh, that's work, so we'll just do this this way. And I am out of import buses. So now all my fuel should be getting drained, so now everything should be running smoothly into the terminal. And we'll see how the storage tests are doing. We still got lots of room for more fluid, so that's perfect. And how are we doing with our lava here? Alright, well, it's not down a lot. But uh, it has actually dropped a little bit. So what we are going to do is we are going to take our fluid export bus, plop it here to the uh, to the lava tank, and now uh, what you put in here is basically a bucket of whatever fluid you want to export. So in this case, I actually have some lava buckets. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So just come over here. And I just do that, and in theory, my lava amount should be increasing. Now you will notice is that you actually do have the ability to adjust how much it migrates at any given point in time. It's actually doable with the, uh, the import buses too, so if I was smart, I'd be having it takes the fun a lot faster. Now it does drain energy a lot faster doing that, but obviously if you don't want to wait for millions of uh, a millivolt
of buckets to uh, to go through, then um, you, know, you can just speed it up that way if you have the extra energy. So why are you not working? Again, it might just be a lava bug, so I just kind of need to wait until I... Uh, just need to wait until it uh, catches up and starts using more lava. Alright, I'm going to wait for that and then I will be back. Alright, so this setup is actually working. Um, you'll see the amount of fuel has actually jumped up slightly. Uh, my mistake is the fact that because so little lava gets used at any given point in time, it's really hard to see what's happening. So instead, I'm going to get myself, uh, we'll get myself some portable tanks. And I'm just going to show you how this operates. Alright, so we uh, will take another export bus. Now, these are a little bit more finicky, as you can see, in terms of if you break them from the front with a wrench, they will actually break as opposed to turning. So it's not a huge deal, but if you get annoyed with it, I'll just all you have to do is remember to just stay to the side of it. So we'll put the lava bucket in. And we'll increase the amounts. And now had I been smart, I would have remembered I actually have to connect it to the stupid import slot. So we will get through this. Get our cable. All right, and now we attach the lava bucket to it, and there we go. And we've got uh, we've got now the lava flowing into it. So um, the lava is being imported from the, uh, the tank over here, going into our system. Now how? If this was actually completely empty, it would still be set up on this disk. And uh, but yeah, so now you can use the system basically anywhere your AE network is. You can actually go and uh, and uh, pull in and take out fluids without having to have these huge storage tanks or another type of storage method. It does work with uh, everything you can smelt here, and, like any type of uh, liquid. So. It works with water. It works with all the molten materials. It uh, it works with liquid DNA, fuel, oil, all that stuff. So this will actually help me consolidate my base significantly. Um, now the one other item I'm going to show in another step is you should, in theory, now be able to uh, use the AE system to craft things that actually require fluids using the auto crafter. Um, it's a new feature and I haven't actually tested it out yet so I'm going to uh, to uh, make sure I know what I'm doing there and then I'm going to set up a second video that will actually show you how this process works so then now you no longer need to have anything besides the AE network for all your uh, inventory and crafting needs. Uh, this is Jalapeno signing off. If you have any questions, uh, put a comment in the, uh, in the YouTube section. Any suggestions for the next things to uh, uh, for me to cover, uh, feel free to add that to like it, share it, you know, all those wonderful things. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're always up to date on all the changes that uh, get made to the mod pack. And take it easy.